Okay, so here goes something. I don't know what. This is the first time I'm attempting this, so... Anyways, Thanksgiving. Well, we all know the historical and other significant parts of it, and sometimes the shittiness of it, and... But, you know, overall, it's a pretty good holiday. I mean, you're hanging out with people, eating some pretty awesome food. Because, I mean, come on, turkey. Pretty frigging awesome. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really matter what you do, man. You just, you're with some pretty cool people. And sometimes it gets dull when you after you eat and you're waiting for dessert, but, you know, there's points at which it's kind of dull. But, I mean, then you've got the dog show or some other Thanksgiving tradition to do, you know. <laughs> the group to watch the, par the dog show after the parade, you know. <laughs> That's how it is. Welcome to America. Mm, you know, not, and there's the other part, but I don't I think this is the appropriate time to get into that because that would be just a lot of new ending for an hour. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's like I know everyone's just like, oh, I'm thankful for this, I'm thankful for that, I'm thankful for the, you know, whatever. I, I've never been able to really find anything I'm kind of thankful for because it's like I think about certain things a lot. So there's nothing ever really specific about it. And uh, it's just, you know, it's a holiday. You get to eat food and you get to do kind of some stuff. But I guess you know, I guess something that's kind of important, other than you know Thanksgiving, ha having a Thanksgiving get together with everybody, and you know doing having a job and whatever else, you know. I guess some, the thing for me is band, um, playing my baritone or euphonium. Very youth. Welcome to that world of instrumentation, because nobody knows what it is outside of band. Somebody, I once said I played baritone, and they're like, and somebody said to me, said to my face, baritone saxophone? Yeah. That is not the instrument I play. I don't play with it. <sighs> but, I mean, band's been pretty important to me for a, a while. I mean, I started on trumpet, but... Mm, some trouble with the mouthpiece because it's a small mouthpiece. Yeah, don't get me with that irony at all. But it's a really hard one to, cause it's like, yeah, my baritone mouthpiece. I have it, you know, it's in my bag and I like, don't get it. But baritone mouthpiece is kind of something like maybe a little bit smaller than this. It's about this size. This might be actually more appropriate out of the tuba mouthpiece, <laughs> but I think, you know, tubas are bigger, but it's like, this is a bear, like, an outside of the baritone mouthpiece. Trumpet mouthpiece is like, you know, so if this is baritone, trumpet is like this. It's really smaller than French horns, so like, French horn can fit within the trumpet mouthpiece and so on like that. It goes, it's kind of weird. The brass instruments are really freaking weird. Like that. But, it's a, it's a the trumpet mouthpiece is small, so I had trouble with it, but I switched to baritone, and that's kind of been my main instrument since. And I really do it. I really love that stupid thing. But, um, I mean, I rented my original horn, I rented for. Oof, like a good five years or so. And then with the rental credit that I had built up on that thing, I was able to get my new one. My, like, brand new. This thing's got four valves. It's shiny. It's just, I'm the only person who has used this thing. I was able to get that for like 700 bucks in retail, and my horn is like 2000 something. I'm just rounding a bit because I can't remember exactly. Horn prices are so 
so it's like ludicrous how expensive a brand new horn is. But it was like I was able to get like a brand new horn for like seven hundred bucks. That's how much rental credit I had. Insane amount of rental credit. And the best part was it was under the and because it's like the company I was renting it from, they switched names and then they started they do under the new name and the contracts were they honored the old contracts under the old name and those contracts were different than the new contracts under the new name. So my old uh since I got it I started renting under the old name and the old contract, that meant all my rental credit went towards the horn. <laughs> Versus the new contract, which were on the percentage towards the horn. So, yeah, I got I struck gold on that thing. And the irony too is it's gold. <laughs> Brass instruments come in two colors: uh, silver or gold. <laughs> so, and I picked gold. And you can get them in other colors, but that's another avenue of instrumentation. Back on topic, because I can write about band for that part of band for my life. But band's been this important thing to me for a long time. It's like fifth grade. And there's been times it's been kind of something that the only thing I feel like I'm good at other than like, I mean, I enjoy a lot of my classes and stuff like that, but I'm just not that great in them. But it feels like band is like the one thing I'm really good at. And it's really just kind of been a lifesaver for a lot of reasons. And especially marching band. I mean, that was just, oh my gosh, marching band's amazing. It, it really, it's, it's an experience. You hate it, and you love it, and you can't... So you you start, you get this amnesia over the summer and everything about how gross band camp is and all the hard work and the director saying, yelling one more time at you and just all this other stuff, but you freaking love it. It just, you hate it and you love it and it's just something you have to do. And it's, it's, and it's amazing. It really is. I mean, I've had so many good moments in there. There's just some really good moments in band. <laughs> Fun ones, too. Like, there's this one kid who plays trombone, and during breathing exercises for marching band, because concert band doesn't really do breathing exercises, it's probably because concert band you're just sitting and playing, versus marching band you're 120 beats per minute. Sometimes, but you're, you know, that's them choosing that because that's the average speed a band goes. You're going 120 beats per minute for 10 minutes. You're doing a lot of, you're putting a lot of air. You're breathing like crazy. I think, oh gosh, it was, I came across something. Uh, DCI, they did something with the, they put like, they, you know, that stuff that they test for athletes, like they help their air and stuff like that. They did this on like a DCI drummer, and the dude was breathing like a marathon runner. The dude was, yeah, I mean, that's how his body was working, it was like a marathon runner. And it's, it's only like a 10, 12 minute show on the field. And if that's the drummer, what about the wings? <laughs> Holy crap. But this one kid, this trombone player, somehow some way, I cannot figure it out for the life of me. We call it getting high in air because in the middle of it, he will just start laughing. No reason he will just start laughing hysterically because something, I don't know, something's in his head or in his brain or something like that. <laughs> he just starts laughing hysterically and he's got the whole back, back row. Because you get the back row of the arc, you know, because the front is the wood, you know, the arcs are all set up. So you get your clarinets, your flutes, and just everything, so it's all arc. And the, well, brass, the brass is in the back, especially, and then the, but you've got the whole, whole brass section just gone. Because we don't have that this case. Because we still, it makes no sense. 
There's no reason. I have never seen anyone else do that. They get lightheaded. You, there's any number of things that happen when you're redoing breathing exercises. Sometimes you get lightheaded. They get. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> there's no sense. But, you know, I mean, that's one of the funnier moments. <laughs> and, of course, there's the uh, jokes, the band jokes. The band uh, puns. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Because band people, let's just say we're all a bunch of dirty minded. Yeah. Dirty minded people. Very. But, I mean, it's been something really crazy and awesome. <laughs> I mean, I can't get enough of it. I mean, marching is, you're on the field with this one experience because there's just an energy there while you're performing. So on the field is one, and you're watching, and it's a whole different experience. And then you, you have all these different experiences watching different groups and everything. <laughs> and it's just amazing. And then one of my favorite things is when we get to meet the another band after, like, a football game or we're just at a competition, so we're just talking to other band people. And it's just like, we all just, like that, we just hit it off. Nobody has to think about it. Because you already have that common, we're in band, we're a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> I don't know a lot of weird people. But it's, it's really kind of an amazing thing. It's insane. It's probably going to kill us all and wreck our knees. But we wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, I mean, wrecking knees literally. A lot of people I know have they're wearing knee braces. Or there's a lot. They have a lot of issues related to marching band because of the knees and stuff. But it's, it's been a real saving grace. And I just love it. I mean, and then not only do I love it for my personal experiences. I love the historical stuff related to it, and I mean, there's so much cool stuff about how bands have certain, certain, certain things came to be in bands, why they dress a certain way, why they act a certain way, because they're, you know, obviously, I mean, the military ties heavily into band and all that. I mean, and then you've got, like, the drum corps, DCI, DCA, and, but, and it's just amazing what these guys have done, I mean... Drum Corps International, the pre precursor to it is the VFW marching competitions, and the reason they went to DCI is so they could have more freedom creatively and financially. And they did, they've done things that, I mean, one of the Drum Corps was one of the, they were like one of the first to do asymmetrical drum, which was huge. It, I mean, now, you don't think about it. No, oh, it's a metric girl on the field or in a parade or whatever. You, you don't think about it. But then, when they, whenever, I can't remember which core it was, but when they did it, it was like nobody done this before. Nobody. I mean, there's a camaraderie that comes with it. I mean, you, know, you have, you can have common relationships with a lot of people and all that, but there's something about going through a camp, and it doesn't matter what kind of camp, if it's a high school band, high school band camp, or a drum corps camp, and I've been to kind of all of them, there's a camaraderie that comes out of it, because you're marching half naked sometimes with these people, and I mean half naked like you're wearing a t-shirt and shorts, or something else, but you know, but you with these people for so long, and it's amazing what comes out of that. I mean, the finish, the final product at the end of the season is phenomenal, and man, it's just wow. And it's just, it's a thing. It's you have to experience it. I know not not everyone's cut out for it, but oh, I better be cutting this short because I just ran into. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh...